えー、それでは皆様、えー、大変お待たせいたしました、えー、また本日はお忙しいところ、えー、KIT ラーニングエクスプレス2014、えー、留学生成果発表会にお集まりいただきありがとうございます、えー、私本日の司会を、えー、務めます金沢工業高等専門学校グローバル情報工学科の松下と申しますどうぞよろしくお願いいたします、えー、なお今回のシンガポールとインドネシアからの留学生の10名の招聘ですけれどもこちらは独立行政法人科学技術振興機構の日本アジア青少年サイエンス交流事業さくらサイエンスプランの支援を受けて実施しております開会に先立ちお礼申し上げますどうもありがとうございました。それでは発表会の方に移っていきたいと思いますまずはじめにですね私の方から KIT ラーニングエクスプレスの概要について簡単にご説明いたしますえー、まずこちらの左の方、えー、ご覧いただけますでしょうか、えー、今年9月にですね、えー、シンガポール理工学院が主催しておりますラーニングエクスプレスに金沢工大の学生3名が、えー、参加しインドネシアの、えー、ジョグジャカルタですに、えー、ジョグジャカルタの村を訪問しました、えー、学生たちはここでは、えー、竹製の、えー、家具の製作過程ですね製作工程の、えー、改善を図るアイディアを持ち帰りましてそれに基づく解決策のさらなる検討、そしてまた現地での実用化に向けて、製品、製作づくりに金沢工大生3名が取り組んでおります。そして今回です、ね、この12月のプログラムでは、その9月に参加しました、これですね、シンガポール、インドネシアのムハマディア大学、そしてペンバングワン大学の学生たちを本学に招待しまして、このラーニングエクスプレスで出てきたアイデアを、本学の夢工房、そしてまあこのイノベーションデザインスタジオの機能を活用して、ともにプロトタイプの改善を図って、それをまた現地に持っていって、そこで実際に村の人たちに活用してもらうことを目指して、今回一緒にここで活動,活動しております。そのどんなものができるのかというところは、この後の学生たちのですね発表で聞けるかなと思いますので、ぜひ楽しみに。していいただければかなと思いますで3月、また今度ジョ,グジ,ャカルにジョグジャカルタに行くときにはこのプロトタイプを持って現地に向かいます、えー、簡単に、えー、今回の参加留学生の、えー、紹介所属になります、えー、まず、えー、シンガポール理工学院から、えー、6名の学生とあと引率の先生が1名来ておりますムハマディア大学ジョグジャカルタ校から、えー、2名ペンバングワンナンショナルベテラン大学ジョグジャカルタ校から2名で金沢工業大学からはサポーター学生として20名の学生が彼ら留学生の日々の活動をサポートしていただいておりますこちらがですねこの金沢滞在中のプログラムになります12月13日に金沢に到着しましたその当日にですね工大生とアイスブレイクとしてセグウェイに乗ってお互いにコミュニケーションを図る活動を行いましたで14日は日曜日にです、ね、金沢市内を文化体験ということで、高大生とグループを作って、市内を一緒に散策して、いろんな金沢のものを見て回りました。15日から伝統工芸制作、そしてまた滞在先の交流館で日本食の料理体験を行いまして、16日はキャンパス見学、そしてこの日から本格的にプロトタイプ制作に向けた打ち合わせを開始しました。17日、午前中、夢工房をまず使おうということで、T シャツ制作を取り組みまして、その後17日の午後から18日までは、夢工房、そしてこの20イノベーションデザインスタジオで、プロトタイプの制作に取り掛かりました。で、昨日19日は、彼らがここまで滞在し、金沢に滞在してきた文化を、彼ら、自分たちの国と比べてどう違うのかという異文化を比較して、それをビジュアル化する。というワークショップを1日行い、本日の成果発表を迎えております。で、ここであの今回の桜プランですね。あの体験、もちろんプロトタイプを作るのはメインなんですけども、ただ金沢でどんな作る体験ができるのかなっていうのを、えー、こうテーマとして挙げておりました。やはりまずは、えー、友人作りですね。で、えー、金沢に来たので、えー、金沢の伝統工芸品、えー、金箔を使った。えー工芸品ですねそれをカラーにこう作ることを体験してもらいましたそして、えー、夢工房でのプロトタイプ作りそして、えー、異文化ですねあのただ来てそれを自分たちの,その体験で終わるんじゃなくてそれをじゃあ国に帰って友達に共有したいと
その異文化をじゃあどうやって言葉じゃなくて視覚的に伝えようかということを昨日行いましたということであの文化体験あるいはものづくり体験すべてですね人との付き合い友人との交流ですねこう作るということで彼らの今日の発表でいろんな感想なり気持ちなり今日は聞けるんじゃないかなと思いますのでぜひ楽しみにしていただけたらと思います。それでは簡単になりますけれどもこれで私より概要の方を終わりたいと思いますそれではここから留学生に彼らの発表をお願いしたいと思います OK SP student so it's gonna so it's your time for your presentation So I'll be moving on. And first one we have is、uh, Japan and technology. And this was actually created by、uh, Sh Shario. And he's over there. So I'll be talking about it. Firstly, you can see、uh, a vector map of Japan. And so now we'll move on to the internet penetration in Japan. Firstly, you can see that Japan has the highest internet penetration、uh, with regards to countries such as Indonesia, USA, Europe, and Singapore. With Singapore and USA following very closely behind, Japan is still leading with 86.2%. And this just so,、uh, shows how, in, how avid internet users Japanese people are. So,、um, these are just some of the modern technologies that Japanese actually use in their daily life. And first off, we have the Segway, which is a tool that we actually learn to use on our first day in Japan. And we also have our Food management being revolutionized by the Japanese people. We have the conveyor belt system, which is very new for people in Singapore. And、uh, there is how they clear their trays, and also the kaiten sushi that is very popular in Japan and also overseas as well. So we have Japanese electronics, which is everywhere. And for example, we have Brother or Epson, which are very popular printer brands in Singapore as well. And just a few statistics. Actually, 75% of fans in our HDD comes from NIDEC globally, which is a Japanese brand. And 90% of Moto Gears are supplied worldwide by a Japanese brand called Mabuchi. Lastly, we have the 787, which is an American brand with a Japanese touch. So, how is this so? Because、uh, the 787 is from Boeing, which is not a Japanese company. However, with The wings of the 787 are actually made fully by a Japanese company called Mitsubishi Heavy、uh, Supplies. And this, it just, this just shows how、um, Japanese electronics are everywhere nowadays. So, moving on from that, I'll be talking about another infographic that we made. So, just give me a moment. Okay. So, another one is population densities we have by Kenneth, who's right there. And so we can see this is a picture of Kanazawa from the mountain peak that we went on our、uh, second day in Japan. And we can see the difference from Kanazawa and Tokyo. In Kanazawa, it's a very open white space, and we can、um, you know, really see the whole landscape of Kanazawa in just one picture. However, in Tokyo, we can Really, only we, can, we feel very enclosed. We feel like we are trapped in a box in a sense because of all the high rise buildings. Whereas in Kanazawa, it's mostly short buildings, and、um, yeah, we can appreciate the landscape a lot better with Kanazawa. This is a picture of Singapore,、uh, and you can also see there's a lot of high rise buildings, and it's just very different from Kanazawa itself. So, there's also the spatial experience that we have here in Kanazawa. We can see in this picture there's a mixture of nature and buildings, and this just kind of shows a very nice a,、uh, blend of different parts. And so, we have just this picture to appreciate that as well. So, I'll be talking about the area. The area of Kanazawa, Tokyo, and Singapore. We can see that、um, Tokyo has, is one of the largest,、um, has one of the largest lands、uh, compared to these three parts of the world. And with regards to population, Tokyo has a larger population compared to Singapore, and Kanazawa only has around 400,000 to 500,000 people. 
and uh, with regards to density, even though uh, Tokyo has a lot more people, we can still see that Singapore is a lot denser than uh, Tokyo as and Kanazawa. So this just shows that um, Singapore actually has a lot of people, 7,615 to be exact, and in one uh, square kilometer. And this is actually a lot of people. It just, just, just shows how dense Singapore really is. So moving on, I'll also be talking about another, another infographic that we made. So this was actually made by me, and it's the presence of Muslims in Japan. And it will just talk about uh, Muslim presence and uh, the Muslim community in Japan. So we have here a graph, and it just shows how the percentage of Muslims in the individual countries that I've listed down below, which is Indonesia has around 80 to 90 percent, which are Muslims. Singapore has around 14.7 percent, and Japan uh, is a little white dot with 0.1 percent. So, yeah. And this was um, a picture taken by one of our Muslim friends. We actually have five Muslim students on board with us, and uh, it just shows, highlighted, that uh, there is pork in the uh, instant noodles in Japan. So what she quoted was, having to think twice and being afraid to eat food that contains pork. So um, this just shows how uh, it's more difficult for the Indonesians to find halal food here in Japan. And moving away from that topic for a while, we actually, I actually uh, found the Global Hala Market Network um, in the world, generally. So in 2013, which was just last year, the network was $1.1 trillion, and an estimated amount of $1.6 trillion will be the global network in 2018, which is a huge jump from $1.1. So Japan has actually planned to take steps to start catering more for the growing Muslim community. And one of the examples we can see here is a brochure that is uh, made by the Japan uh, National Travel Agency. And this is a Japan travel guide for Muslim visitors where we can see a picture of a mosque and a Muslim family happily eating together. So these are just some statistics where in 2011, there were 140,000 Muslims visiting Japan. And in 2013, which was just last year, it actually doubled more, actually more than doubled to 300,000 people. So from a Gulf Time correspondent, we can see that large Japanese food companies such as Ajinomoto and Asahi Beverage, Kewpie, are all expanding their product range with more halal products to cater to the Muslim community. Another example is the Muslim Friendly Project, project that was uh, initiated in Malaysia for the Muslim people to visit Hakuba, which is a place in Japan. So with this, they actually create tours that are suitable for the Muslims, and they will also be able to experience the Japan culture without uh, having to face any food issues. So, yeah. Also, there has been an increase in halal restaurants in all over Japan, and uh, the Japan National Tourism Agency has come up with a list of halal restaurants just for the Muslim people who visit Jap uh, Japan. So Japan is actually expected to reach a million Muslim visitors by 2020, which is more than half, I mean, more, more than twice of, more than three times actually of the visitors that are currently visiting Japan. So I was actually asked a question, and with regards to Japanese companies branching out into Indonesia, Japanese investors have actually ranked Indonesia as their top investment destination in the world. And this is not only in view of their long-standing presence in the archipelago, but also given its vast population and increasing GPD levels and a rapidly expanding middle class with increasing disposable incomes. And I found this from the Mark Plus Insight, which shows how um, Japan has really tried to infiltrate the Muslim market it. So this is the end of my infographic. And moving on, I have one very last infographic, which is made by Idayu, who's right there. And <laughs> so it just shows the happiness index or uh, comparison of Japan and Singapore. So how happy are we? On the first picture, we can see a picture of Singapore, uh, Singaporeans just walking randomly on a Singaporean street. And this is a picture we, we took in the Kanazawa mountain peak. 
And with the Singaporean picture, we can see that there's not really much human interaction in a sense they're all very isolated and they just keep to themselves. And personally, with my own experience, I have seen a lot of Singaporeans just using their handphones, uh, picking up calls in the MRT stations where I know that um, in Japan, that is uh, rude, considered to be rude. So now uh, there's some part, uh, words here where we kind of categorize them. So we can see that money is uh, kept in capital and it's right in the middle. It shows how we have our priorities set with money and education, shelter, relationships, sleep and work being more important than happiness itself. <coughs> By seeing the 2013 happiness index, um, we can see that Singaporeans to Japanese, Japanese are generally more happy people and Singaporeans have around 30% of happy people and Japanese have around 47% of happy people. So with that, I would like to conclude this with uh, the amount of time we still have left in Japan. And uh, I feel like <laughs> it's, it's a countdown. So I mean, in ja generally Japan has more happy people, so we would like to embrace that and uh, really embrace the one more day we have here and be <laughs> happy people along with the Japanese. So thank you very much. And I'll now pass the time over to Idayu, who will talk about uh, how this project actually started. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. So now I'll be moving on to our sorry. So now I'll be moving on about our local experience here in Japan. So uh, um, as a group, we will be talking about the introduction, our cultural experience, design thinking, prototyping, and then we will conclude the whole presentation with our conclusion. So now I'll be talking about our experience here in Japan. So in the first few days uh, uh, of our stay in Japan, we actually uh, walked around Kanazawa and we found out that there's a lot of interesting things over here. So one of the most interesting things that I picked up was uh, on our second day of our stay here, we actually went to a fish market in Kanazawa. And there's this shop seller, this, this man over here. He's, he, uh, when we want to take a picture of him, he actually posts. And it's kind of funny because um, in Singapore, um, in comparison, Singaporeans, when we want to take a picture of them, they will like, shoo us away, like, go away, go away, that kind of thing. But then over here in Japan, they actually post for us. So it's kind of refreshing to see this kind of um, uh, gesture going on here. So the other thing that is interesting to us is actually the food because um, <clears throat> on one of our stays here, uh, Mr. Sakamoto actually Sorry. Uh, on one of uh, the days that over here, right, Mr. Sakamoto actually cooked for uh, the, every one of us. So it's it's very heartwarming, um, <laughs> heartwarming gesture. Yeah, and the food is very delicious too. So moving on to that, before before we actually come for this Japan trip, uh, we had a pre-trip which is in Jakarta, like sept uh, on September. So what happened then was that um, over there we actually um, as a group. But there's a lot more uh, SP students that went to that trip. So there's around 60 of us that went there. So what we did there was that uh, 60 of us were separated into three groups. And then each group is, uh, was sent to a village. And for my group, we were actually sent to a village called Timbul Harjo. And in that, um, in that village, we actually had to work with a group of um, bamboo craftsmen because we identified that there's, they face a lot of difficulties in trying to create a bamboo, uh, to create their bamboo crafts. So as a group, we actually identified that uh, they actually had a lot of difficulties in trying to create uh, bamboo furnitures. What kind of things that they actually produce is actually, um, <clears throat> they create a lot of bamboo products. For example, they create a sofa set, a chair, you know, the uh, blinds, curtain blinds, and they also make tables and such. So that's the kind of intricate craftsman, uh, crafts that they actually did. So as a group, we, create with this, uh, we came up with this prototype where the user, the bamboo craftsman, actually had to sit on a chair or wherever he is comfortable. And this table will be at the height that he needs it to be. So what happened over here is that the user, the craftsman, will actually have to pedal on this um, this uh, object over here. He had to pedal it in order to move this uh, this gear over here. So what happened? What happened is that the gear over here it will actually cut the bamboo and also it, this this thing. 
can actually be replaced with a drilling drill bit and what happens is that the drill bit can actually poke holes into the bamboo. So, yeah. so next I'll be sharing you a video about how uh, the process actually looks like. Hold on for a minute. Hold on. Sorry, wait for a while. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, <laughs> there's a technical difficulty going on. So I can't really share with you <laughs> what happened. But um, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, so moving on, uh, what actually happened is that the bamboo craftsman, I will, I will show you how the process is uh, is. Done, okay. So first, right, the bamboo craftsman actually had to squat down on the floor. Sorry, had to actually. How do I do this? Okay. <laughs> he actually had to squat down on the floor, and then he had to hold the, this. Uh, example, this is a piece of bamboo. Okay. So he actually had to squ uh, squat down on the floor, and then he had to hold the bamboo down with his legs over here. And then what he had to do is that there's a special tool that he needs. Um, there will be a cutting uh, a knife, and then what he had to do is actually. Hold on. What he had to do is to actually cut the bamboo <coughs> from a certain angle over here and over here in order to create a hole uh, to fit the, bam the other parts of the bamboo into each other in order to create a sofa set or the things that he wanted. So uh, we identified that perhaps one of the user needs that we analyzed is that maybe he actually need a, a more simpler form of uh, cutting and also to drill in order to minimize the amount of effort that he needed. So, yeah, this is what actually happens. So he actually had to cut. He actually had to cut the had to cut uh, the bamboo from this angle and from here and from here in order to create a hole. So uh, as a group, we identified that perhaps the user needs it to, is to actually minimize the amount of effort that he needed to do this. Yeah, so that's how we actually came up with the prototype in order to speed up this process. And so um, after, after our trip in Georgia, um, our KIT friends actually came back to Japan and, he, uh, and they actually continued on this project for us. So our next, I'll pass to Sharil to talk about the second prototype that the KIT students actually came up with. Uh, Thank you, Dayu. Hi, good evening. Uh, okay. So this will be the second prototype that is produced by the KIT students. It was ready when we reached here. Uh, the, product, the prototype is made up of two main parts. There is the saw and the table that holds the saw. Oops. Okay. <laughs> so what, how does this work? Is that, how does this work is that, uh, as you can see over there, there's a wooden uh, tube. That will be the bamboo. So the bamboo will be in between uh, the saw and the table and then um, the user will just need to ha use one hand to keep sawing until it cuts. Yeah. So uh, actually, this is a very good product for uh, for cutting straight uh, straight cross-sectional cuts, and also it releases uh, relieves stresses on the body because you just need to use one hand and then you can put it on the table and sit down and do it. However, we felt that after. Um, further discussion, um, we realized that um, the user need more than just a straight cut. In the, it needs uh, multi, uh, different, different kind of shapes and sizes to uh, like just saw the picture you have seen. So we realized that uh, uh, we need to improve the idea um, from this product to something that um, the users can use to cut those shapes. And we found out that uh, because the way they cut the shapes is already uh, very, uh, it's quite efficient and we don't want to disturb that method that they've been uh, comfortable in cutting. 
So we realized that we, we probably uh, would come up with an idea that would help the person um, um, in other ways other than the cutting. And next, uh, Reza will be explaining to you the prototype that uh, we've come out about, come out with. Reza, please. Uh, okay. Uh, after we re watch the video, right, uh, this is one of the screenshots from the video. Uh, we rethink as a group uh, that the craftsman doesn't really actually need a cutting machine. So we decide with a new idea. So we make this uh, new prototype. It's a, it's a holder. A holder to, as you can see, he holds. Uh, as you can see, he holds the bamboo with his uh, with his feet, and he sit on top of it. Okay, uh, we think it's really dangerous for him, so we make him. Uh, we design a holder, and this thing is adjustable. So because sitting like that is hurting his waist and his back, so this thing will be more comfortable for him, so he can uh, sit on a chair or maybe standing up. And also, we design a drawer over here, so he can uh, organize his tools. So it's also reachable. And this clamp over here is to hold the bamboo. This thing also adjustable for different size of bamboo. So we made this uh, prototype with a cardboard, and the actual material will be explained by Kenneth. Okay, thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, hi. Good evening, everyone. So um, this is the very brief uh, mock-up uh, prototype that we actually did. So the reason we actually did this prototype is to really understand whether our idea was actually feasible and to really think about, begin to think about the possible materials that we could actually use to, come, to kind of craft up the prototype to test how, how well it actually works. So in the process of designing it, uh, what we actually discussed together and collectively was that we wanted to provide a drawer for him, which would allow him to keep his tools safely. And this, would, uh, this was really uh, for the user. And it was actually uh, added in after rethinking about his needs. So what material we actually used was to use uh, steel to kind of craft the frame of the base and we, which would also aid in um, supporting the entire prototype. So next, the middle was, is actually made out of um, aluminium, which is lightweight and durable. And it allows the user to really move this, uh, move this product around with ease. And lastly, the top, um, which I'll explain in detail uh, in the later slides, is, th is made out of steel as well, which was um, which is really about making his entire process easier. So at, at the beginning, we crafted something that was really made out of two clamps, which in our minds, we perceived it to be something that would really be adjustable to allow him to clamp uh, bamboos of different sizes into this, which would then allow him to be able to cut the bamboo with ease with, at different positions. So, Upon uh, thinking and discussing further, what we realized is that this wasn't really feasible as it's of a rather fixed size. So we moved on to kind of, sorry, we moved on to kind of really uh, pushing it apart. And from there, we realized that um, this curve, this curve uh, lock system wasn't really going to work, which was then one of our KIT friends actually um, he introduced the idea of using a jack to us, which is actually um, the middle lower picture over there. And the idea is to use a spring and kind of be able to screw it in to allow the person to clamp uh, whatever object he needs. So from there, it was further thought upon whereby um, from using the spring, we should actually make it uh, something like this, whereby using the spring, the person will be able to use one hand to kind of pull open the product and to place his bamboo in with ease. So that's really the idea of um, understanding his needs and really trying to simplify the entire process for him. So, now I'll be passing on the time to Jia Yi and she'll be talking more about, uh, more into detail about this and uh, this prototype that we have conceived. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Evening. Yeah. So, um, coming on to this um, prototype that we made, 
Firstly, it splits into three parts. Sorry. First, the drawer part. Um, for them to store their tools, which makes them to be more organized. And um, also, we mentioned about the clamp and the middle part. The middle part is actually adjustable. It is in order to in order to um, to fit the person's height. So if let's say um, he's he's used to squatting down, so this one can be adjusted to be the minim at a minimum. Thanks. Yeah, this is the minimum. So the minimum is roughly from the base to the top is roughly 40 cm. So um, it is very suitable for him to actually sit on a 20 cm high stool to do this work as well. Um, it also can be adjustable to the higher by pulling this and pulling the top part. Yeah, so <clears throat> The top part can be pulled up the, all the way up for him to stand and do it at a height from bottom to the height of um, 115 cm. So, um, as mentioned about safetyness, in order to prove that this thing is safety to use, um, for the pole, we actually have a 10 cm clearance. Like, here, this pole is uh, from here to here is uh, 40 cm. So um, there's a 10 cm clearance in order to make sure that they do not over pull it, over exert it, so that to cause unbalancedness. So um, we will try to modify to make sure that um, the whole thing cannot be adjusted above that 10 cm. And next, come to this clamp. This clamp works in a way whereby it pulls. Yeah, it pulls, and then. The bamboo can be stick here. <laughs> yeah, the bamboo can be laid here. And so he can do his job this way. So um, this whole thing is um, made in Japan. And the materials are all used from what we can see in um, Yumi Kobo. And with the help of Ms. Sakum Mr. Sakumoto and his, her, his assistant. So, however, this product is to be used to suit the needs of the bamboo maker in Indonesia. So, in order to prove that this thing is able to be used there, we have um, Galu from Indonesia to talk about how you can actually make it in Indonesia. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Jay. Uh, last uh, last September at Lex uh, in September, uh, as we as know uh, that result of from the obs observation uh, in Yogyakarta that the condition of the people in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, is uh, not really enough from from the side of the eco economy economical pro uh, problem. So uh, maybe. Uh, from for for make this this uh, this product is easier to make in here in Japan uh, because the the material is also available in Yumekobo and we can we can take take for the make the this pro this product but in Indonesia uh, uh, the bamboo makers uh, as the craftsmen is a lot of um, most of the bamboo makers is in, the, in Indonesia is the uh, have not enough money for uh, for buy the materials to to make the and build this product like this. Uh, so uh, as uh, as our talk that uh, the alternative products for the material of this this well this. Uh, this box, this box that made from metal is can be uh, can be changed by the plywood that uh, the thick 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 plywood, 
and then uh, the stand the stand can be changed by maybe the PVC that stick uh, into the box with the PVC glue uh, maybe like this and then uh, for the uh, maybe there's uh, this alternative products alternative material I mean uh, is uh, make the bamboo makers of our craft, craftsmen is easier to get the materials for make this product uh, for make easier uh, their work for make the hole for bamboo uh, and then uh, because uh, for the for the PVC, PVC, PVC for the stand. Uh, what the reasons? The reason for choose the PVC stand is uh, make the enough durability and uh, enough strength to hold the bamboo when make make the hole in the bamboo. Maybe like this. Uh, that's that's all for me. Uh, I pass to Darren. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now I'll be talking a bit more on just the project itself. So actually, usually the project, this whole project ends when uh, we just pass the prototype to the villagers to let them test it out. So actually, uh, thinking about that, we actually think why not we just up it up another level to further enhance the user's experience. So uh, apart from that, we need to consider things like when we pass them the prototype, they might be thinking like, what if I want to replicate a prototype like this? Or what if when I use this prototype, somehow towards, after a few months, something goes wrong or like, the something is missing or what, or he does he, he forgets how to use it after we uh, handed it over to him. So what we actually came up with is that we came up with, apart from just handing in the prototype, we give two manuals, which one will be uh, this, which is the manufacturer's manual. Uh, I'll be explaining a bit more on it first. So basically the manufacturer's manual will be a guide for the users in the village. village. If they want to replicate something like this, uh, what materials would they need? Uh, so yeah, this is the cover page. And so basically we will uh, explain a bit on what material choices would they need uh, and reasons what would they need. Furthermore, um, going down. Yeah, and just a brief introduction, the purposes like, and also for the manufacturer's guide, we also have like component specifications. Like apart from this, uh, we actually separated this in three parts. So this is part A, part B, part C, and what exactly what materials you will need for the parts. And also a step-by-step -step manual assembly, which, um, which shows clear in-depth uh, explanation for what would they need to do to further progress it and getting to the three parts. Yeah. So I will briefly scroll through this. So basically just illustrations and uh, descriptions of the process. Yeah, and also apart from that, Apart from that, um, we also uh, will be adding considerations like as uh, what uh, Chai has mentioned, like th this is uh, produced in Yumekovo in Japan, but what if uh, the people in Indonesia want to produce it too? So uh, we do consider facts like we will add in like where can they buy uh, such materials or alter alternatives they can use instead of just uh, metal or they want to use uh, PVC tubes or even wood. So the second uh, manual would be called the user manual, which is basically teaching the user how to actually function this tool. As explained by Chia Yi just now, uh, how to function it. It actually just briefly states, um, as mentioned in the cover page, uh, yep, the materials needed to use this tool, as you know, uh, the bamboo craftsman maker actually uses a chisel and a hammer to produce the holes in the bamboos and also a step-by-step -step guide. To actually show uh, the overview of the product and step by step in descriptions on how to actually uh, function this uh, product, if in the case that the user forgets how to use operate it, and finally some uh, safety precautions. Uh. so to actually to sum up the prototype process is that like we not only consider the fact of uh, uh, meeting their needs, like to f further help them ease the. Uh, productivity of cutting the bamboo. We also consider the fact that after we handed the things over to them, uh, we have we have to think uh, what will, what problems might they face and etc. Thus, coming up with these two manuals. Now I'll pass the time to uh, Kenneth to further conclude everything up. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, so um, at the end of everything, uh, really um, 
Firstly, I would like to thank everyone on behalf for having us, and uh, we really ap uh, appreciate all of your warm gestures and your hospitality. So, next, I'll just uh, briefly uh, conclude everything. So, um, firstly, the entire thing is that uh, we definitely see this as a project that has much potential and it can be further developed even though we might not be here anymore. And I, I do hope that, um, and we all hope that um, this, project will, this, sorry, this project will be taken to much greater heights and will be developed to something that really suits the needs of the users and really something that is done by our friends. And um, I also really hope that this experience has really um, taught uh, or actually given insights, new insights to our friends and also definitely for ourselves. We have learned much from everyone. And lastly, I would just like to thank everyone again for your warm hospitality and for having us. And uh, definitely, I, uh, I hope that uh, the co collaborations will continue in the future and I uh, hope to see everyone again. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for sharing your insights on the cultural differences, also your prototyping project. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, now, maybe we, can we take maybe a few questions on your project so you guys can maybe... そしたら、あの、今、あの、シンガポールの学生たち、え、ま、文化の、え、違い、そして、え、金沢高台生が、え、シンガポール、あ、インドネシアから帰ってきた作った一番向かっていただいての、え、プロトタイプ。それを見て
しいですかそしたらあのこれで学生の発表を終わりたいと思います。あの皆さんもう一度盛大な拍手で学生たちに拍手をお願いいたします。Thank you very much それではですね、あのこの KIT ラーニングエクスプレス24のプログラムをま終了したということで、あのシンガポールとインドネシアの学生たちに終了書の方を渡したいなと思います。Now、uh, we would like to present you the certificate of the program, the completion of the program. Okay. Okay.、Uh, on behalf of Michiharu Nakamura. The president of Japan Science and Technology Agency would like to、uh, present you the certificate of achievement. Okay, Ms. Chia Jia Yi. Chia Jia Yi, yeah. Okay, okay. Ms. Chia Jia Yi has successfully achieved the course of Japan Asia Youth Exchange Program in Science, Sakura Exchange Program in Science, administered by the Japan Science and Technology Agency. Kanazawa Institute of Technology ran the course from December 13th to December 22nd in 2014. We welcome you as a member of the Sakura Science Club. Michihalu Nakamura. Congratulations. We have actually one more certificate from KIT. Ms. Chia Jia Yi. Has successfully completed all the activities at Kanazawa Institute of Technology as part of the KIT Learning Express 2014. Okay, Omihito Matsushita, Program Director. Mr. Jalen Wu Rishan. Okay, wording is the same as previous. Congratulations. Ida Yu. Mr. Mohammed Shahil. Kinis Chonjin. Mr. Fajuli Salfan. Galu. This three, Augustia. Rather, okay, 
uh, Dr. Noel Christian. Uh, he's a chaperon from a Singapore Polytechnic. Mr. Oliver Samuel. Uh, he's a chaperon teacher from UPN. Penbangan Dayak no Insotu no Sensei. Okay, thank you very much, students. So please, please have a seat. Okay, at this moment, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to Singapore Polytechnic. Because of the Learning Express program you designed, we could send our first group of KTC students last year. Then, it expanded to KIT this year. Without SP, we wouldn't be able to host this program. So we really appreciate your continuing support and the friendship between us. Thank you very much. And also, I'd like to thank to UPN and UMY for taking part and for your hospitality you provided us in Yogyakarta. Our students had a wonderful experience in Georgia. Okay, thank you. And I really hope all of the students had a great time here learning about new cultures and making new friends. So we look forward to further collaboration in the future. Okay, thank you very much. え、皆様、え、このえ、KIT え、そして、え、今回の9月は、え、金沢高台がラーニングエクスプレスに参加して、そこで活動を一緒に行った え、え、最後になりますが、え、Okay, congratulations. Yeah. All right. Okay.